Now we'll take a look at when we can and cannot use some shortcuts when dealing with geometric probabilities in circles. Well, if I'm dealing with a sector area or an arc length, I actually only need to know the ratio of the angles of the uh, intercepted arc, so if it's like x degrees, over 360. So why is that? Well, basically over here on this side, let me highlight this, sorry. So I only need to know this. Why is that? Well, if I did the probability before, let me get a pen, and normally I would have this whole thing over, so that, let's say we did area, pi r squared. It'd be over the total area, which is pi r squared. Well, that's the sector area. That's the total area. These simplify and go away. So you're just left the, with the ratio of degrees to total degrees of 360. This also works for um, arc length. Now let's take a look at where we can use this shortcut. In this example, we're still using Sarah's spinner, and um, we're going to find the probability to win a balloon. Now I could say this spinner is a dartboard, this would still work exactly the same way. Or I could say it's an actual spinner wherever the little notch thing lands on the edge. So remember that the arc angles for the doll is 80, the toy car is 120, and we figured out last time that this angle right here is 160. Well, I can just do a shortcut. The probability of a balloon is 160 over 360. You can simplify that. The zeros go away. Then it becomes 8 over 18, 4 over 9. That is the probability of, of getting the, the balloon. All right. What's the probability of winning the car? So that would be 120 degrees. So you have the 120 here over 360. And hopefully you know that simplifies to one third. So in this problem, I don't even know the radius of the spinner or the dartboard. But I'm able to figure out probabilities because we're using sectors or arc lengths. Now, if the circle is not sliced from the center, creating sectors or arc lengths, you may need to go back to the composite area strategies we did earlier. And this is an example. You can see that I actually have circles and circles. They're not concentric. By the way, the word concentric means shares a center. So the center of this circle is over here. The center of this uh, free fry circle is in the middle. It's concentric with the small soda circle. So um, on this case, because circles, the circles are not concentric and it's not sliced from the center, we really need to go and find the areas. So let's take a look at this problem. A restaurant is having a promotion where customers get to throw a dart at a target. Assuming the dart lands randomly on the target, so we're assuming they can hit the target, what is the probability they will win a burger or fries? Well, if they're going to win a burger or fries, let's take a look at the target. Where does the dart have to land? It has to land in one of these three yellow places. So those are my favorable outcomes. The total area will be this big circle here. So first of all, I'm going to start by finding each of these little yellow areas. For the burger, it's a circle, pi r squared. The radius is 1, so the area of this circle is actually pi. For the french fries, the radius is 2, pi r squared, pi times 2 squared. That area is 4 pi. My total yellow area would be pi plus 4 pi plus pi, or 6 pi. So that's what I'm going to use in the uh, ratio on top for my favorable outcomes. I still have to find the total area, and that's the large circle. Well, one thing I should notice is if that's one unit for the radius, that means that's two units total, plus two, the radius of this large circle is four. So the total area would be pi r squared, where four is the radius, or 16 pi. Now, if I want to find probability, I'm going to do this yellow area over the total area. So I'm going to have six pi over 16 pi. The pi's cancel and you will find 6 over 16 that simplifies to 3 eighths. So the probability that a customer will win either a burger or fries um, is 3 eighths. So not quite half. More than half the time they will actually get a free small soda. 
So some questions to think about. Why can we use a shortcut for some probability problems that have circles? Some hints there is that it has to be dealing with sector, area, or arc length. And so the, because the uh, areas will cancel out or the arc lengths will cancel out, we're just left with that x degrees over 360. So when can I use it? When I'm slicing from the center to create sectors or arcs. Now, uh, we did an example like this. When could you find the geometric probability even if you didn't know the area or the lengths of the figures? This is the question at the beginning of our notes. And you could actually argue that the answer is really on this last section that we did.